Good day. Hey, thanks for picking Witcher Math. Huh, get it? Pick? Okay. Um, today we're going to talk about scale factor and how it relates to the area of two-dimensional shapes. That is, shapes that you can draw on a flat piece of paper. Okay. First of all, we need to review just a little bit uh, what scale factor is. Scale factor is the ratio of copy to original. So I'm going to write it in the form of a fraction ratio here. And if you remember from the previous video, maybe you don't, copy on the toppy. That is the uh, incredibly clever way of remembering that the copy goes on, well, it goes on the toppy. So if that didn't work, then you didn't remember, and maybe it's not such a great method. Hey, you know what? Some people think, hey, maybe my videos are too long. There's too much stuff. Just get to the point. Get to the point, Mr. Witcher. I can't take it anymore. Okay, here's the point. Let's just get to the good stuff. The area of the original shape, when multiplied by the squared scale factor, is the area of the copy. There, that's the point. You just finished the video in a minute and a half. Nice job. More details? Here we go. Time for some more details. So we're going to use scale factor. I'm going to teach you how to use scale factor to calculate the dimensions or the measurements of similar figures. Use... Uh, so... There's this guy sitting in the park. He's playing chess with his best friend. And the guy moves his pawn. Okay, just kidding. I don't know where I was going with that. But that's what we use scale factor for. Let me give you an example. Take a very simple shape. Take a little rectangle that's uh, two units wide, four units tall. Find the area, which is of course two times four, or eight. Remember the point. Da da. The point has to do with the area, so that's why we need the area. Okay, so the area is eight. Now, if I say, hey, the scale factor is three over one, what's the area of the copy? Well, first of all, we're going to find each dimension. The D in dimension, that's where you get the D in the 2D shapes. That's where that comes from. It's the word dimension. Also in 3D shapes, that's where that D comes from. Dimension is just a measurement. Okay? So we're going to take the 2 times the scale factor equals 6. And that's going to be that new dimension. And we're going to take that long side times the scale factor. Gives us that new dimension, which is 12. Our shape just got quite a bit larger, but we don't care. We don't care. We're risk takers. Okay. And now the new area is uh, 6 times 12, or 72, right? We take the new dimensions and multiply them to get the area. Let me give you another example here, and then we're going to use these two examples to get back to the point. Remember the point? Yeah, that's the point. Watch out, we're getting to it. If I just give you a little shape like this, one by five units, and I say, hey, what's the area? And you go, oh, that's easy, one times five. Sorry, off the screen there, got a little excited. And then if I say scale factor is two over one, that's a two, not an L, you would simply go... 1 times 2 over 1, which is 2, and then you would go 5 times 2 over 1, is 10. So we're using the scale factor to find all the new dimensions. Now I know you already got the answers in your head, but the point of doing it when you already have the answer in your head is so you can trust what I'm teaching you. So if it's a weird problem where you don't have the answer in your head, you can trust that this will work because it will. 
So here we have 2 times 10, which is 20. Okay, so now we're going to analyze this a little bit. Okay, we're going to squeeze this in the bottom of the page. How do they relate? How do the area of the original and the copy relate? Let's see. We had 8. We had a scale factor of 3 over 1. And we got a new area of 72. Huh, interesting. Then on the red one, we had an area of 5. We had a scale factor of 2 over 1. And we had a new area of 20. Interesting. So 8 times 3, let's because that's how we found the new dimensions, right? 8 times 3 is 24. But then 24 times 3, 72. So we got the scale factor used twice there to get the new area, area of the copy. Does that work down here? 5 times 2 is 10. And then if we multiply that by the scale factor again, that's 20. There it is. It's the square. The square of the scale factor is how this works. So the area of my original times the squared scale factor gave me the new area. And same thing with the red one. Original area, squared scale factor, new area. This is crazy. That's it. After all, the point of this is if you take the area of the original two-dimensional shape and you want to make a scaled copy and you want to find the area of that copy, you don't need to draw it. You can just take the scale factor, square it, and you've got the area of the copy. Huh. So you might be thinking, wow, that's cool, but what if I need to... What if I need to shrink, reduce, or shrink a shape? Will it still work? Well, can you still square a scale factor? Let's find out. Let's say I have an original area of, oh, 18. And let's say I have a scale factor of one third. And what's the new area? Now, we could draw these shapes and everything and count boxes, but that takes too long. Here's how we can do it. We just take 18. We multiply it by the scale factor squared, which is, what's 1 times 1? Right. What's 3 times 3? 9. Let's put that 18 over 1. Let's multiply straight across. What's 18 divided by 9? 2. That's the new area. So we've got the area of the original was 18. Scale factor, 1 third. Area of the copy, 2. Makes sense. One more example. Let's say we had an area of 16 of the original. And you had a scale factor of one half. Well, you might think, oh, that's easy. That's easy. And if this is a multiple choice test, maybe you would choose this. Maybe you would choose eight. No, that's wrong because we need to square the scale factors. So we take the area of the original times the squared scale factor equals the area of the copy. So we're going to take 16 times 1 half squared. That means each number, the top and the bottom both, get squared. What's 1 times 1? What's 2 times 2? No, it's not 5. It's 4. If we put a 1 on the bottom there to make this multiplying a little easier, we see that the new area is actually 4. Okay, and there's that relationship of the square. So we've just proven that it works for reductions and enlargements, getting bigger and smaller, which gets us back to the point of the area of the original shape multiplied by the squared scale factor 
gives you the area of the copy. Woo! Thanks for watching, and I hope I got straight to the point for you that time. Stay tuned for part two, filled with practice.